Hey, I'm Chris Zepp from Make Everything, and today I'm gonna to show you how I made this ridiculously oversized panel dolly and moved a 500 pound table with it. Check it out. All right, so this project starts out with some four inch by half inch mild steel plate. Uh, this was left over from another project, but you know, it was perfect for this application. The quarter inch is going to be plenty thick and the four inch uh, dimension is perfect for what I want to do. Um, I'm cutting them up with my cold cutting saw here and what's nice about this is it doesn't throw sparks all over the place. It just basically makes chips using the carbide teeth on the blade. I head over to my belt grinder and I just clean up the edges, give a little bevel on anywhere that I'm going to weld and make sure there aren't any sharp spots. I don't want to damage the table that I have to move so I want to make sure everything's nice and smooth. Now this is actually a leveling foot. Uh, it's left over from the maple conference table that I built. And there'll be a little pop-up now that will bring you to that video. And that's basically what I built this dolly for was to move that table. And I wanted to put some sort of a clamp on it. Originally I was just gonna throw some wedges in there, but I thought, you know, if I was building this dolly, I might as well make it in a sort of final form, you know, something that I'm actually gonna be able to use in the future. So I cut the threaded post off of one of those little leveling feet and I took some 5 eighths all thread and welded it over to the leveling foot. And now what's nice about this little leveling foot is that it has a sort of pressed in fitting so that the foot can rotate even when you turn the axle. So that'll be nice. I can actually tighten things up. I don't have to worry about making marks on whatever the material is. Now I take a larger sized um, Deming drill bit and I drill directly through that quarter inch plate I believe this is a 7 8 drill bit. I want it to have a little bit of room. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to weld a 5 8 nut to the outside of this plate. And that's going to be what my all thread threads through to give the clamping pressure for whatever's in the panel dolly at that time. And I use this little 18 volt bandsaw and it's awesome for keeping around the welding table to cut up material like this. So there's a little trick. You can kind of use gravity to make sure that everything lines up nice and straight. I put the nut on the all thread and then I let it hang upside down while I tack it into place. And just a little reminder here, this is a zinc coated nut. I didn't have any raw steel stuff that I could use so you want to be careful with the fumes that come from welding something like that. Um, I do have my fume extractor running and I have a fan blowing the air out of the building as well to you know keep everything as safe as I can. Now I'm using these little 90 degree clamps. These are from Ali Iron. Um, I've talked about these in a bunch of my videos. I'll put a link down in the description of where you can find them. They're pretty useful. I really enjoy using them. They've been great in terms of fixturing and stuff like that for me. Now I want this to be really square. It's very important to me. So I'm doing a lot of clamping here. And since I'm only really welding on one side, um, I'm worried about warping. So I tack everything and then I go back in and I give it a nice penetrative weld. I'm using my Lincoln MP140 for this and it actually does a great job welding the quarter inch. For such a small machine I was really surprised and really pleased as to how well it penetrated in. Once I have one side welded on I'm able to clamp up and fixture in the other side, get some tacks in there and then get you know my clamps kind of moved around so that I can weld it completely. Now you'll see in the end of this, I do wind up actually adding some welds to the inside of this frame. I thought I could get away with not doing that. Um, I didn't want to have any sort of, you know, bevel on the inside that I would need to accomplish in my material, but I just didn't want it to bend. I wanted this thing to be super heavy duty. So I go back in off camera and I did some welding on the inside as well. And then I just padded the inside of it with plywood to make sure I didn't do any damage to whatever I was moving with those welds. Once everything's done being welding, I get it all out of the clamp, and you can see the purpose um, of this sort of clamping foot. Now, I cut it just short enough that you can take it in and out without it permanently being inside the dolly. That was really important to me because if I ever need this full width on the inside, which is about three and a half inches, I don't want this foot to be in the way. It's kind of big. Once that's all done, everything's clean, I can weld on the little follower for the axle. Now, again, I'm going to be using this 5 8 all thread the axle and this was just what fit in these wheels. I happened to buy these wheels a couple of months ago over at Harbor Freight. Um, I want to say they're, they're rated for a couple hundred pounds each. Nothing crazy but the whole reason I'm using such you know kind of oversized pneumatic tires instead of a hard rubber or plastic 
is because I have a gravel driveway at my shop and it can be super problematic when it comes to rolling things. Usually we lay out plywood and we move the pallet jack and you know we sort of do whatever we have to but it's always nice to use wheels that are big enough to just roll on the gravel so you don't have to do any sort of prep work beforehand. I wanted something that I could load in the driveway and then just wheel right into the shop. So I clamp that little follower on and I push my axle in there. I get a wheel on there, measure the distance, mark that on the other side, and clip it off with the bandsaw again. Now I just sort of deburr the edge and I can start to bolt this thing up. Now I'm just bolting these wheels on, making sure that everything fits nice, and then I'm going to go back in with some Loctite. Now something I wanted was a nice way to tighten this clamp. So I screwed it in and out a couple times and realized that you know it just needed a little handle. I took a little piece of one inch by eighth inch flat stock and I welded another one of these five eighths nuts to it, just using my chisel to kind of act as a third hand sort of setup and hold it down. And once that's all welded on there, what this allowed me to do is it allowed me to tighten it in like a toolless fashion. So it'll have its own little handle. I can screw it on there when I want. That thread will bottom out, it'll lock itself in there really nice and I can just thread it in, thread it back out when I'm done. I throw a little bit of air in the tires, just make sure everything's good. And then the last little touch is I use some red Loctite on those threads because I really don't have any intention of taking this thing apart. And I only, only use red Loctite in an instance where I know that I have enough leverage to get those nuts off because if anybody's ever tried to undo red Loctite, you really need heat and heat can kind of mess things up, so you gotta be careful. You can see here the overview of it. It's pretty simple. Um, it's about a foot wide on that little catch bin, um, and then the wheels are nice and wide, keep it nice and stable. You can see the way that you can take that little toolless kind of handle on and off. The little foot comes on and off, and it really worked out perfect for this application. Now again, the reason that I built this was because we had to move this four foot by 11 foot hard maple table. And because the legs were sort of stabilizing the table itself, we decided not to take the legs off. So we took the dolly and clamped it to the table. You can see the plywood there sort of as a gap. And what was nice was that this thing was strong enough that when we tipped the table on its side and sort of leveraged it on that one leg, it still stayed nice and straight and was super strong, it worked out absolutely perfect, got us into the truck and out of the truck, and everything was great. All right, that about does it for this video. This was purpose built, you know, like I really thought about how I'm gonna move that giant table, and I saw these wheels actually hanging out underneath one of my benches and thought I know exactly what to do. Um, the clamp is super useful. The fact that it's removable is great because I can get the full width out of this and move a bunch of panels if I want to move like a bunch of pieces of plywood or a bunch of sheets of sheetrock. I did go in and get some welds on the inside here just to give it a little bit extra strength. And then what I do is I just stick a little piece of uh, quarter inch plywood down there to kind of soften the edges so I don't damage anything. Again, you know, on the fly, it's going to get a lot of use. I'm really glad that it was able to handle the 500 pound table. Um, so overall, I'm very happy with it. Um, if you liked what you saw, give it a thumbs up, share it with friends to show other people what I'm up to. Um, if you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to my channel. If you want to see what I'm doing in the shop on a daily basis, follow me on Instagram right here, at Make Everything Shop. I post every day on my story and on my feed. I answer a lot of questions and share some tips along the way while I'm making stuff and doing things in here. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this little video. Again, I am Chris Zett from Make Everything, and I hope to see you on the next one. Thanks.